The University of Maryland Medical System is proud to support the work of the American Heart Association by driving equitable health in our communities through nutrition security, from farm to kitchen to table. The Empowered to Cook video series is an example of that work. Improving diet and creating environments that support healthy choices are critical to increasing cardiovascular health. Foods can be an integral part of the faith community and bring people together. Places of worship may host meals and provide a welcoming and loving place to find family. Having support from the faith community can help many who experience food and nutrition insecurity. It is important to note that people living in communities of color disproportionately face barriers that perpetrate poverty and hunger. Because of this, these communities have a higher prevalence of chronic disease such as heart disease and diabetes. Our goal is to increase access to healthy foods and provide education on how to prepare these foods in an effort to improve health outcomes. Together with the American Heart Association, we are seeking to build a culture of health and our faith communities with knowledge of resources for healthier eating and living, and by making sure that healthy choice is also an easy and cost-effective choice. Hi, I'm Chef Stephanie Rose with the American Heart Association, and I'm here today with Empowered to Cook. And today we are cooking a wonderful Venezuelan chicken stew. It is a hearty, family, celebratory soup, and it feeds an army, and it's so simple, and I can't wait to get started. This dish has so many ingredients and like every single one of them is a powerhouse vegetable. The other wonderful thing about this soup is that it's Central American, but each Central American country just kind of has their own spin on it. And it's just, it's a tapestry of culture. So get yourself a nice good knife. Why not get these carrots out of the way? Beautiful carrots, let me move these over here. And nothing has to be really finely chopped. I mean, this is rustic. It can be kind of, you know, chunky. Nothing fancy with just, I'm not even gonna peel these. That's pretty easy, right? Half inch, one inch. But these cook a little faster, so I want a nice, nice hearty chunk. Otherwise it'll break down in the cooking. Now we've got some peppers. I love the red, I love the, the yellow. Again, this is gonna make this dish super colorful. And again, this doesn't have to be in a teeny tiny little, little dice. And I'm gonna do my little cheating thing and just cut it into panels. Makes it kind of easy around the seed. Love that. You could make a huge batch that's why this is really great for celebrations and family gatherings, because it feeds so many people and scales super easily. Butternut squash, sweet potato, which I love and I've already cut it up. You could also use white sweet potato. That's also common, a, a batata that's used in um, the Central America. It's a little sweeter, which is just, Fine, but that, that's the other really wonderful thing about this is you could totally swap out. If you can't find this, use the white one. If you can't find this, you could also use yuca. Delicious. And then, but you really need to have the plantain. Um, so what I'm gonna do is try to show you how to peel them. You know, they come in many different colors. So you've got the green plantains, you've got this plantain, which is almost ripe, and then you have the, the blacker ones. You can eat all of them. They're just a little hard to peel, so I'm gonna do the best I can here for you. Cut off the ends. Just kinda cut that, and then try to get that outer skin off. I just, oh, okay, this one, actually, I think this one looks perfect. Leeks. A lot of people don't know about leeks, and uh, leeks, I, I've known about leeks. Leeks are wonderful. You know, they are in the, the alum family, and they've been around since, since the Roman times, and they were brought to this country, and everybody fell in love with them because they're milder than a regular onion, and they are delicious. 
The only problem with a leak is they are dirty. <laughs> so you've got to really make sure you clean it well, which is why I've or cut some up already, cleaned. And sometimes I only use the white part. But if you start using the darker ones, this, it's a little chewy. But you can still use it for a stock, so don't waste that. And I usually cut them like this, or I'll cut them in half. There's really, doesn't really matter for this particular dish. Three cloves of garlic. You know how much we love garlic. So I'm gonna cut off those little nubby ends. Again, it's the bulb of life. Packed with nutrients. So I do that little smashy thing. I always point my blade away from me when I'm doing this. This helps get all of that papery stuff off. Dice, again, this doesn't have to be a, we don't have to mince it. And of course, we're gonna put a bay leaf or two in this. And then I think, oh, what? I just need to do the half an onion. So remember, stabilize your onion. So in Venezuela and, and in a lot of the Latin, Latin American countries, this dish is called Sancocho. That's uh, what I found out. But each, each Latin country has their own different variation of it. They put in different meats. So it's very versatile. Last but not least, should be an, an aji, aji pepper, I think I'm saying it correctly. Um, but we have some habaneros because I really wanna put a little bit of heat in it, but be careful with your hands. You know, these can be hot, but the flavor's great. Could use a smaller knife to get this seeds out. The seeds are the hotter part. So I am gonna try to get, get them out. And I might cut this up a little bit smaller because I don't think I want people getting huge chunks of habanero pepper. Disclaimer, uh, I'm, I'm a little worried about my hands now and you should be when you are dealing with habaneros or any hot chili peppers because some of them can be super potent and your fingers will be burning right now. So uh, you may wanna wear gloves, um, but what you absolutely have to do is wash your hands and wash them really well and, and just try to remember, don't touch anything on your face. And it's, it's sometimes it's hard to do. So I'm gonna not touch anything and, and wash everything, including my knife. So I'll be right back after I wash my hands. Great, got, got my hands clean, muy importante. And now all we have to do is put all of these fabulous, super, super food, nutritious vegetables in the pot. So I'm gonna start with the sweet potatoes. We're not using the purple ones because that would make the dish a little funky color, even though they're so wonderful. Why not just, just gonna go around the room here? Peppers, the sweet ones, you know, we love. The carrots, you know, those come in multicolors too. Love that. Leeks, adorable, wonderful, delicious. Nice, mild flavor, should be put in every stew. They can be poached, oh my gosh, so much to do. Garlic, isn't it neat? We don't have to saute any of this. I'm so not used to that. Our beautiful habaneros. And they come in different colors too. I'm not touching them. <laughs> Just to be on the safe side. Our butternut squash, and if you can't find that, you can substitute that with pumpkin. So many calabaza, Jamaican pumpkin, and our wonderful plantains. Wow, I can't wait to eat those again. I know there's a bay leaf in here somewhere. I'm gonna put another one in, and now I'm going to put in eight. Bone, not boneless. Keep the bone in, but skinless. And take off as much fat as you can. You know, there's parts you want to rip off. If you are touching it with your hands, you know, make sure you wash your hands well. But there's a lot of flavor and there's some other nutrients that are in the thigh versus 
the chicken breast. So let's go for this. Love the bone in because that's really gonna impart a lot more flavor. And here we have it, I have my beautiful spoon. Could it be any easier? Now I'm just going to seize my back. Fill the pot with water. Just so it's covered to the top. Good thing I have a big pot. It should be good for now. Stir that up. Get everything kind of incorporated. Oh, this, look how gorgeous this looks. I can't wait. Can't wait. Now it's heavy. <laughs> I'm gonna put this over here. And we're gonna crank it on high. We're gonna get it to a boil. But first, gotta have some fresh cracked black pepper. Always go for the fresh if you can. I think that's enough. And we are allowed to add just a little bit of salt, okay? We can add a quarter teaspoon, okay? Didn't put, there's no salt in anything, right? And then we're gonna put, crank it up to high, put the lid on it, bring that baby to a boil. And once it's boiling, I'll take the lid off and then simmer it for an hour. And then we're gonna have something very delicious. So let's make sure our heat is off. Turn the flame off. Even a professional can forget to do that sometimes. So always double check. And it is hot, so be careful. Check this out. We still have the beautiful color. Oh, my chicken is cooked. You wanna make sure you have enough liquid for everybody. This beautiful thing. Oh, the plantains are gorgeous. Color. Color is there. Beautiful. And we don't want to forget our lovely garnish. Definitely want to put cilantro on top. It's fabulous. Serve it with a lime. I have some beautiful baby cilantro to add on top. So fancy, and there we have it. A beautiful, I want to say soulful dish that is just a, a, a myriad of, of so many cultures. So I don't see why everybody is not going to love it at your next um, celebration. So enjoy. Enjoy.